What's up everyone, it's Russo. I hope everyone is doing well. Please follow my Instagram at Russo Lifts just in case something happens to this YouTube channel. You can follow, message, and you can watch my daily story content on Instagram. I'll see you there. What's up everyone, it's Russo. I hope everyone is doing well. Drop a thumbs up for the King of Macedonia. My steroid guru coach, Alec Matrivsky in the virtual flesh, in the metaverse. We are going to be discussing the battle between SARMs versus steroids. Specifically, I'm going to title this SARMs or trash or something along those lines because, you know, SARMs have been attacked ever since SARMs have hit the mainstream where the real old school gear guys are like, man, all SARMs are trash, fuck SARMs, there's no data on SARMs, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Then you have Alec, you know, in my opinion, the underground goat guru who's the same age as me, 25, pharmacology knowledge, off the charts, and he's a bit of a fan of SARMs, which really goes against a lot of the gurus in the current space. Now, obviously, Alec and I are not team SARMs or team steroids. We slot yeah. right in the middle. There's pros and cons of both, and I'm always going to be plastered as, like, the SARMs dude. When in yeah. reality, I did all that SARM documentation because no one did it. It was cutting edge information. And Alec has done SARMs only experiments as well. One being one of the craziest experiments I've ever seen of S4 only with birth control as an estrogen base. And Alec actually switched from steroids. He started right out the gates with steroids to SARMs, then back to steroids. So I think as we're throwing up these pictures of both of us, we have achieved crazy different looks on SARMs only and SARMs plus steroids. I really just want Alec to just lay it out how it is and then I'm going to be super excited when I see the war zone in the comment section. All right, yeah. so let's go from my anecdotal experience and, you know, uh, uh, basically cover the, the differences. Both essentially are doing their job via uh, meeting a transcription pro at the androgen receptor. So SARMs are specifically made to be more selective towards skeletal muscle and bones. Now the, the, the wording selective it's kind of you know misleading because they're not absolutely selective. We see this with S4 for example binds to the M1 receptor in the eye so it's not you know absolute nothing's absolute but they have a better and, and significantly more favorable uh, 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 binding affinity for the AR and transmitting efficacy with uh, uh, with less side effects, like there's less androgenicity. Now, this also comes at a price that they're not as ex uh, effective as steroids, even though in low doses, like three milligrams of osterin, you know, or, or red or whatever, like outperforms more milligrams of testosterone, but uh, and also shrinks prostate size, or rather they castrate mice, and they see which androgen uh, gets uh, the the prostate from you know at the flated states back to baseline or, or above baseline. So SARMs not only do produce at low doses higher anabolism, but they lack the androgenicity. Now this greatly decreases as the doses are ramped up. You know people use crazy doses of SARMs that are uh, you know significantly higher than any research there is on them. And, you know, that's why they start getting steroid-like effects and side effects, more so side effects. So, like, if you're into gaining as much muscle mass as possible or being, you know, like, you know, jacked out of your mind really, like, faster than, yeah, steroids are a, a, a better for that reason, but also they come at a higher price. Me, personally, I started off with, uh, with the steroids. I didn't and I'll have like Andrew throw out picks yeah so i started with steroids because like i mean we, we could get it uh over the counter and you know there there weren't arms back then this was like 2000 and i think 16 or 15 15. um i started with steroids did a you know a cycle uh you know i had my fair share of you know uh experience with gyno with uh you know all of the estrogenic uh, side effects but also once i start getting the androgenic side effects such as hair loss i was like holy shit, i don't i don't want this and 
I didn't look like I'm on steroids. Like I, I looked like I'm, you know, decently in decent shape. I had, you know, great musculature, but it wasn't, you know, fucking mind blowing. So, you know, that's when I saw you, Derek, and another dude like Dylan Jamelli, which you know ended up being kind of weird. And <laughs> but like you were, you were, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you remember he he was like a, an extremely skinny dude. That looked like hey guys, really... yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> hey, you guys want to go on SARMs for sixteen <laughs> weeks? Sixteen? How about twenty-four weeks, Alec? I can make a cycle for you. How about we stack all the SARMs together? Yeah, uh, yeah, that was funny, but it, good uh, interpretation. Someone in the comment uh, section is definitely going wild for Dylan Jamelli. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But point being is, you I were got blocked gorgeous. by him on Instagram. Like he take like thug pictures in the bathroom, and I call yeah, yeah, him like I my man, yeah, my yeah. man. Like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I remember. Oh, I remember. I, I've, I've seen pictures of him even dating back then. But uh, I think he also blocked me. He blocked me on Facebook. I think yeah, I was trolling him. I was him. so mad. I tried to get all my friends to get me unblocked by him, but yeah. yeah. I said it was, too much it's was, funny, but yeah. you know it is what it is. You were you were the OGs. You were the pioneers of SARMs. Um, that you you gave me the ideas. You know you three, because uh, I remember those were the first videos that I even watched on SARMs, and then you know started doing some research, read studies, and so forth. So um, this is how Alec uh, and I became friends. Is he was fucking beefing the shit out of me in some Facebook group. <laughs> And then Bro. we're both hot-headed egomaniacs on tons of fucking androgens at like 18, 19 years old. And then boom, here we are years later, fucking humbled sigmas talking about uh, SARMs versus steroids in the most unbiased view. It's interesting, though, because uh, everybody that, I, that meets me usually starts off with online beef. But uh, you know, I think I, I think I earned your respect because you're like, look at this little fucking dweeb, and then I just yeah. kept making results over time. You're like, oh, yeah, fuck, he actually is serious about this shit. Yeah, 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 exactly. Because like your information was accurate to based off of what I've read. Uh, the only uh, knock on you was that you, you were not that great at mm. the, the time where you you were you know uh, uh, coming up you know so yeah. people talk shit on you and i already had like a you know like i'm a steroid base and obviously like i was slightly bigger than you and you know that's mm -hmm. why i could you know throw that in your face but point being is that uh, you know when you're passionate about something you know there's no way you couldn't be friends or or, or like each other because we're in the same shit so mm -hmm. um but yeah, without digressing much, I switched to SARMs. Uh, started off with S4 right off the gate. That was the first time that I I, I tried. And, yeah, and I'm gonna have uh, Andrew throw up pics because this look yeah. you achieved is insane. Everyone yeah. in the comments, if we threw this picture up and be like, he's on yeah, Winstrol, not yeah. on Winstrol, not on Winstrol. Derek made a video on me. Uh, he said like uh, it was titled like the craziest arm transformation or something like that. Um, and everybody in the comment section was commenting he's on yeah, steroids. You're a liar, he's Alec. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and which is funny because when I switched to steroids and he made another video on me, he switched from SARMs to steroids. I remember that video, yeah. And people were like, "Oh, he just upped the dose. Like, what the fuck?" <laughs> Like I, you can I see like, a distinct difference in your look, Alec, when you switched. Yeah, like I get, I went from I think ninety two kg bulked on arms to like one hundred and five kg lean on Angel on solo plus some GH towards the end, uh, and you'll you'll throw up pictures because uh, they're mm -hmm. interesting. So you don't get that effect if you just increase the dosage. Like, what are you talking about? Mm. Uh, but anyway, point being is that while I was on SARMs, uh, I got also on... Um, I was already on the test, right? Because I started off with that and testosterone, assuming that I can do TRT and not lose hair. And, and you went into was... SARMs for the hair. Like, Alec, yeah. for those who don't know, Alec is all about his fucking hairline. You know, he's about maintaining it. If like, I remember when he was younger, like I was taking all the different SARMs and like, he'd be like, yeah. boom, 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 boom. Like, do you get hair loss? And I'd be like, yeah, 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 he'd yeah, be like, yeah. fuck, 
fuck. <laughs> and then yeah, he was like, damn yeah. it, I have to keep going blind on S4. He's like, S4 is it. He's like, you better find some fucking new ones that work that are stronger than S4 that don't yeah, cause hair yeah, yeah. loss. Yeah, exactly. Because, um, I mean, interestingly, so uh, n not only because I, I tried every fucking possible uh, uh, dosage, even in studies, like uh, uh, 10, 20 times the dosage, even more so than that, it just uh, uh, grew prostate very closely to baseline, but not even achieving baseline. So even dose dependently, it, it didn't have an exponentially uh, uh, higher androgenicity. But, and I really liked it because, like, it had the androgenic look to the body that like vascularity hardness you know it was like very very uh, uh very interesting you know ha having those effects usually you'd associate with purely androgenicity but uh, that wasn't the case and while i was in swore i i continued the detach ride and, uh, and you didn't know and, testosterone base no no nothing nothing no and, test base this was sarms uh, only sarms only yeah yeah I, I use growth hormone uh you know between cycles on cycles but I, I, there was no other androgen in my body also uh what happened was when i started getting the low estrogenic symptoms you know i said okay i'm missing the estrogen component and i just bought estradiol from the pharmacy I uh, uh, started using that and you know I had no problems in regards to how I subjectively felt and also my like lip lipids were fine no liver stress yeah, dude, nothing this is like my blood work greatest actually... experiment ever it, when it comes yeah, to it, controlling all the variables like people people have slept on this experiment I'm like look Alec proved it and there's nothing you can argue about the way you did that to yes. where you can't point the that look was insane and you yeah. could have maintained that look indefinitely and you said you yeah. pulled your blood work and how to look yeah not only the blood work I'll, i did like i do either once a year or twice a year i actually do uh full heart checkups i did an mri while i was on steroids and uh, later on on sarms uh, my heart decreased in size when i made a transition and while i was on the on sarms my prostate shrunk even more because i was on the task right as well and also my hair regrew like I, you'll put up pictures i have you know a collage so uh, uh all of that suggests that and supports the whole concept of them and that's what they were made for so it's not you know why, why are people blown away by it but uh in essence the the, the triggering part for me was that yeah, I was super shredded and I had to do that because I was not big enough to be competitive out on a bodybuilding stage, being like almost six foot two and uh, uh, weighing like what well, was like eight, uh, 187 to 90, I think. Or yeah, I, I think it was more so. You're around 190 pounds. Uh, around so, slightly below that. And at my height, you know, I looked impressive without clothes for sure but in a shirt you know it wasn't you know anything mind-blowing but i was like extremely shredded because I, I i was basically trying to play the cards that i'm dealt with so i said well, let's see how lean i can get and uh, interestingly so uh that was the the healthiest time where uh, for me from a biomarker standpoint from uh you know how i subjectively felt you know being that light is like extremely uh, uh eye-opening how much you know uh having extra weight on you uh, is a burden you know i was like so full of energy even though i was like dieting and all that but like even when i was walking i was like like floating through air so point being is that i actually looked better than when i was on steroids because I, I actually built more muscle tissue not more muscle than steroids but like i added more muscle to my frame and i, I got leaner so like my body composition was better with less side effects and that's why i do recommend them to people that are not close to maximizing right, this right you know, right right why not like why Alex, not you had like the dream like instagram yes. physique like what people like oh i don't want to look like a big juiced up bodybuilder but you know i want to look good and like when i'm at the beach you know do you need to jump yeah. down the steroid boat of all those no. side effects when no. you literally achieve that at 18 19 which yeah. is SARMs after already paying the consequences of doing yeah. steroids out of the gate. Like, 
Yep. And you 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 went on to now you're 280 massive and people can't be like, "Well, he never got big." Now you're 280 massive like yeah. you've experienced like all these different body types that like some people only have one body type their whole life, but you've been all these different body types. And now yeah. like you're heavy with the gear usage, you can yeah. directly weigh the pros and cons like now that you've went down the road of like okay, I want like a mass like as big of a physique as you can get at your height like Yeah. Where do you weigh in SARMs now? Like, because a lot of people be like, "Oh, SARMs are a good like stepping stone," but like once you're with real gear, like you never look back at SARMs. Where I don't feel okay. like you completely have that opinion. No, no. Here's the thing. Like, just going off of the fact that I looked better on SARMs after steroids, just means that I wasn't doing everything else right. At firstly, and secondly, they were still effective. I was not. So I, I have I haven't uh, uh, basically reached my potential to where sums are no longer worthwhile. So like and this was me doing two or three cycles of steroids already. So even then I had tremendous progress on top of that on sums. So people are really quick to jump the gun when they can really exploit them and 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 go to a certain from one standpoint to another. Uh, without getting the, the all the fucked up side effects that if they do want to get bigger, then they'll they'll inevitably have to to face. So why not take it you know step by step? Uh, also interestingly, so that would prime you to uh, uh, to basically uh, uh, focus you to train properly, diet properly. When you're on steroids, you're limited. From a from a time frame where like you have to end the cycle at like like let's say 12 14 weeks otherwise your biomarkers go to shit with sums there's not that big of a pressure and since they're not jacking up myostatin like steroids do to the same degree not not even close you can run them longer and keep on getting gains so like you have more time to you know adjust make tweaks you know. Uh, basically gather information about yourself and uh, you know because we're all test subjects with them those are research chemicals so I, I and also this is the reason why I can see people knocking SARMs because there is no regulation there's no like when there's no standard essentially uh, you can get scammed very easily and there are studies where they just compare different SARM brands and their content and you know a lot of them were shit so uh, I get the knock on them for that, but if you if we're talking just purely SARMs versus steroids, like they have their place and they're amazing, and especially for females that wanna be like bikini or or for some even sl bigger than bikini, uh, SARMs are more favorable than taking Anovar and Primo and fucking you know ruining their 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 femininity. So. Um, and again, back, back, uh, going back to uh, from a side effect standpoint, like you can shrink your prostate, you can uh, uh, decrease the size of your heart while making gains, which is you know ex the exact opposite of steroids. So uh, even as a, as a medicine, you know it can be utilized. They can be utilized um, effectively. And the reason why S4 is so great is because it's a partial agonist of the androgen receptor. Uh, so it really like it really tr uh, transcripts a very small amount of androgenicity that is just enough uh, just enough uh, just enough to the point where you're gonna not feel uh, hypoandrogenic there's not gonna be a brain fog or lack of motivation like effort still feels good I, I, I saw no changes as far as like subjectively cognitively mentally or any other you know uh, uh any other victor being off my thing is is exact i don't want to like ruin your tangent but like right. low toxicity orals think about like a regular methylated 17 alkylate methylation or oral yeah you can get away like five six weeks you're really yeah. really torching your liver that's like max yeah. The SARMs, you can run indefinitely cruising, but you're going to deal with yep. the SHBG crash, but you can constantly have an oral in there, which I feel like to me is personally a big deal. Like anytime I take like Diana ball or something like, yeah, like 
it's a bit more powerful, but like come week three or four, like I'm like grabbing my liver and shit. Whereas right. with the SARMs, I never notice any of that. And like, like you said, with women, it's like, it's like nine day, like all women, in my opinion, should at least give Austrian and S4 a shot or Vervar and pre- especially premium. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, yeah, also, that, that should inter- be implemented in all women enhancement moving forward is the SARMs for sure. When, when you're on pro-inflammatory, in a pro-inflammatory state, where that's uh, uh, mediated through uh, anadrol, oral use, or even uh, injectable drugs that are uh, uh, liver toxic, like methyltren and things like that, you're essentially inhibiting muscle growth because like pro-inflammatory cytokines uh, uh, basically uh, cause cachexia. So like they inhibit muscle growth, they cause muscle wasting. So like you're you're basically fighting and going to the other uh, end of the spectrum as on, and, and also add on top of that lower appetite, uh, uh, lack of sleep and also feeling overall shitty. Uh, and also when you're pro, in a pro-inflammatory state, uh, serotonin gets depleted, depleted, so you have more uh, mental side effects. So overall, this is not something that you want to push. And I see people, you know, even though like they're fucking jaundice and they're yellow in their face and their eyes, like they're still taking that anadrol to get the extra gains. Like when right, they're just, right. they're just, they're just, they're just fucking themselves up both acutely and long term. So, uh, you know, your body is not stupid. Like it's, it's, it has its prior- priorities, and you don't have, it doesn't have a priority to grow when you're inflamed. So, you know, it makes no sense to pursue uh, that path if if you get side effects. Let's go into the other argument of factor of like, so we mentioned like the health, you know, benefits of SARMs essentially, right? The, the pros of switching over as far as like a mitigation of biomarker standpoint, but a lot of people come at me again, they probably have never played around with SARMs, but like no SARM is like as powerful as gear where I like disagree saying S23 LGD 3303, LGD 4033, if you dose that high enough, you go out of the selective dosage into the bodybuilding dosage, like they're pretty comparable to most of the orals I've taken, especially S23. Like what was your experience with the harsher compounds? Like what harsh SARMs did you mess around with? Not really like the, like S4 on paper is amazing, Austrian is amazing on paper, but like the more hardcore ones. Well, interestingly, so uh, uh, S23, since you uh, brought it up, the issue, yeah, it's significantly more effective and it, it actually outperforms some oral steroids in, in many ways, especially in the aggression and strength uh, uh, aspect. Um, the problem with those, with S4, for instance, uh, S23, sorry, is that the side effects that I started experience were extremely you know resembling steroids so the whole idea in the concept in my opinion of SARMs is for the they're utilized for their selectivity if that goes out of the window and you're getting androgenic side effects then might as well you know uh, um, either utilize them if you can tolerate them but like if you don't then just go with steroids another knock on, 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 on SARMs in general is that they're not scalable to the degree of steroids like you can do let's say testosterone for instance like you're at 500 and then you would add two more ampules and be at a gram versus you know how many capsules are you gonna swallow of of a certain SARMs to get that jump in uh, in anabolism to that degree so they're not as uh, as scalable as steroids like that um but uh, it, it's they're interesting because they're very like they're exactly as strong as uh, some of the oral steroids and even injectable ones. It's just uh, you know clusterfuck to to dose them properly and also you don't know uh, uh, your individual drug response to a certain compound, especially a research chemical. So you really have to be on top of your game and watch out for things. And not a lot of people are meticulous with it like you, like me, like you know. Uh, the subscribers that are following you so i i do understand the angle and why people knock on them but saying that they're trash or don't work is also like extremely re- and i mean we we have our personal anecdotes and that we're we're gonna show 
but there are thousands online so like and plus they're backed up by research so like it's just stupid to 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 talk shit about them while at the same time people praise torchestron and ectosteroid right like what the <laughs> fuck <laughs> it makes no sense I, I think we'll end this argument. Well, it's not really an argument, but it's just like we're, yeah. we're belittling SARMs. We're, you know, right. we're going team SARMs. I'll go back to team SARMs. It's like you pointed out how there's like when you get into the bodybuilding dosages of the harsher SARMs, it starts to really not make much sense because the SARM is designed to mitigate the side effects. When you raise them up, it's the same side effects, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Actually, slightly worse in my opinion because of SHBG being like, I've got my bloods done and my SHBG is like two or three or four. Like that on crashed on SARMs on only. Like yeah, SARMs only SARS. blast. S23, right, right, like, which, RA140, yeah, yeah, yeah. like the hard Dude. ones. The right, ones that, right. like when I'm on S23, everyone's like, what the fuck are you taking? Like personally in my gym. And I'm like a SARM and they're like, really? And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, this is SARM that's like the same side effects as steroids, S23. What? Right. But anyways, uh, like, like what I was getting on about is like when you ask like the biochemist who actually made the SARMs, like you're talking like one milligram of Austrian from a longevity standpoint. Like if everyone went around and did half a mig to a mig of Osta, it wouldn't impact their HPTA that much. It would densify their muscle and bone, you know, less much muscle atrophy. They really are miracles at the minuscule dosage you're actually supposed to play around with them at. And yeah. that's like the big thing that pisses me off is like, here you have these androgens that literally everyone under the sun can tolerate at these minuscule dosages that will prolong increased quality of life and not impact HPTA in those dosages. And you have them online, a bunch of fucking juice heads like, Oh, these fucking suck. Like, just fucking yeah. get some tests. Like, it's just like, it goes against the longevity biohacking angle of why SARMs are created, why SARMs are being funded. And we sit here and we point out Alex's experience with the S4 only cycle, which he did bodybuilder dosages, but it, it basically, you know, the heart mitigation was there, the longevity was there as a replacement androgen when he took yeah. all the testosterone out of his body and he didn't use no test base. He literally took estrogen along with it. And and I had no DHT because I was blocking it with the test, right? So even the minuscule amount of testosterone that I had uh, did not produce any DHT essentially because I was just nuking DHT and I felt amazing. So uh, uh, th that goes to show like how good they actually can be uh not the that they are because people utilize them uh right. incorrectly yeah that's the problem and uh the meatheads that are you know uh talking shit on them and all that they're getting mad because there are some dealers that overly you know ex exaggerate their effect like they're right. saying yeah i agree like, on like, that yeah. yeah i'm a fucking like tony for instance like he yeah. makes claims about SARMs that are just bluntly ridiculous. You, you know, you know. <laughs> here's a story. Like, I, I remember they did, Trevor and Tony did two videos on SARMs that just like pissed me the fuck off to a point mm -hmm. where I was like contacting where it was one talking about like you don't need a PCT with SARMs, which is a bunch of fucking bullshit. And then you don't um like basically like SARMs only is like all oh, you need to like build enough muscle to become an IFBB pro when oh I was God. documenting like I was the EA athlete who didn't do gear. I didn't cave to the peer pressure and do gear like the rest of them. I wanted to finish my data log of doing SARMs only and you have them over there mouthing off those claims and I'm like I'm like one of the main athletes and I haven't touched SARMs. They can literally see what I look like on SARMs only in my progression. Like, why even market it that way? So because I'll, I'll come back to the meatheads on that and agree that they're blown out of proportion in that sense. And that, I don't want to be associated as someone who marketed it like that because I never did. 
Yeah, exactly. And that misses them off because usually they have their own supplement brands, which are which is a direct conflict because uh, anybody could sell SARMs, and that's why they got pissed off and you know talk shit on them on podcasts on on on, on YouTube and so forth. So I understand their first frustration. But like if, if you're if you dislike how somebody portrays something, do not get emotionally involved and shit on the actual compound if it's legit. So like shit on them, shit on on on, on shitty salesmen essentially or conmans or whatever. You know, do not go after the actual product because they work and they're supported by literature and all that. And they're when still funny, in the literature, they're still yeah, yeah, being they, progressed. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Why would they spend millions of dollars if they were a bunch of bullshit? Why would they still be pushing them right now? Exactly. It's interesting uh, uh, that... Um, so, for example, I'll, I'll take MK677, for instance, which is not a SARM, it's a Zagrida, uh, but uh, it's a Grail and Mimetic, but uh, a lot of uh, people that talk shit on it, that they have their own clinics or are sponsored by clinics are now advertising them like Dave Palombo for instance like right. he, 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 he yeah. there are videos I remember <laughs> uh, like there were there are videos of him actually like me talking, flashbacks yeah t talking shit about uh, 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 even pe uh, peptides and MK677 and then a few years later he makes a video on MK677 and praising the fuck out of it and plugging his, you know, clinic or whoever he's affiliated with, you know, and I'm like, ah, oh, okay, now they're good, right? When you're making money out of it. So, you know, I, I really hate, you know, those kind of situations because, like, just be legit and you cannot go wrong. Right. If you change your opinion, right. say, listen, guys, I fucked up. I didn't do my research. I'm, I was wrong. They're great. Here you go. But do, don't don't just avoid your previous statements and just, you know, go along with the ride with, with what makes you money. Because that, that really, you know, questions somebody's uh, integrity. Like, do it for the right reasons and get paid along the way. Because you're, you're going to get paid regardless if your product is good and works. So, uh, or you you're know, saying it straight. We had an unbiased exactly. conversation. We weren't we weren't dick riding SARMs. Neither was no. I. We both talked mad shit and we said our pros and cons. Now the audience who watched this thirty minute rant, they know the pros and cons and they can go around on the internet and be like, Okay, yeah, that's a con of them or No, they're not complete trash, they're good in this aspect. And we yeah. have education instead of this, like you said, skewed view of can I make money off this? Does does my discount code work on this shit or or exactly. do I gotta wait until you know my clinic carries it? You know. Exactly. Exactly. I just wanted to bring Alec on because Alec has the most insane documentation, in my opinion, besides someone like me. But like he was not in the public eye. You know, he's talking to Derek and I behind the scenes about his arms only, and obviously Derek brought it to light, and I brought it to light too. But like. Yeah. It's just like after you see Alex's thing of S4 only, how long was that cycle? Say how long that cycle oh, was. Oh, that, that was, I think, two years or two and a half years. Think about any other traditional oral. Your your eyes would be yeah. yellow. You would, yeah. Your liver would just like fall out of your body at that point. Bro, and <laughs> I, there was, it, it was funny because... Uh, there was a time because I was I, I was so shredded and, and and depleted of both macro and micronutrients obviously at the end stages and I was doing a lot of strenuous cardio and everything. I actually went anemic at a certain point, uh, which is ridiculous if you when we're talking androgens, right? Like you would assume that I would uh, like just like other PEDs, I would have increased uh, uh, EPO production. I, I basically had the blood work of uh, an anemic girl, <laughs> you know, and uh, uh, my liver markers, my kidney markers, everything was on the money. Um, That's so, so insane. Yeah, but like, that... I, I read the research and I'm like, this cannot, you know, do, uh, unless, the, like, the risk that uh, we're facing is that we don't know which kind of metabolites or downstream what what signaling they can produce elsewhere and like for for all we know i may get like fucking cancer in 30 years or whatever but like going off, off of what we have and the the mechanistic pathway 
uh, 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 in in which they work, then I saw no problem. I saw no no interference with you know any other process. It was just a matter of supplementing estradiol, and you know you're 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 good to go. And you know I had the, the hypothesis. I implemented it. Like in kettles, they use trenbolone and estrogen. You know, Phenoplex was uh, uh, tied with estradiol, right? With estrogen. So like if they do that with steroids that are not aromatizing, why not try it with SARMs? And you know, it fucking worked. Surprise, surprise. All right, guys, I hope you guys learned something about SARMs and learned the fucking truth about SARMs. I will see you guys in my next video.